بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله بها في توفيق تستارت حديث 35 This حديث is about knowing names of God and the issue of predestination and delegation معرفت اسماء حق و مسئله جبر و تفریض so knowing names of God and the issue of جبر and تفریض means predestination or delegation of all power to human beings in their actions voluntary actions حدیث reads as follows it's, it is a hadith from Al-Kafi and Imam Khomeini uh, this time refers to Shaykh Kulaini as Imad al-Islam wal-Muslimin very important uh, way of describing him Bissanad al-Muttasil ila Imad al-Islam wal-Muslimin Muhammad ibn Ya'gub al-Kulaini he is normally called Thiqatul Islam and we had also other descriptions Imadul Islam wal Muslimin Imad and Amud means pillar I'tamad comes from the same root means to rely to depend Imadul Islam wal Muslimin means he is one of the pillars of Islam and Muslims means Islamic Ummah very much depend on pious and godly scholars because Hayatul Islam is with knowledge and Ulama are those who make sure that this life is maintained in Ulama life is maintained not in the books maybe we have millions of books but if no one knows them and understands them they are not making us alim so Imad al-Islam wal-Muslimin Muhammad ibn Ya'qub al-Kulayni Radwanullah ta'ala alayh Radwanullah alayh an Muhammad ibn Yahya an Ahmad ibn Muhammad an Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Abi Nasr al-Badanti he means qala qala Abu al-Hasan al-Rida alayhi salam so Shaykh Kulayni quotes finally this hadith from Imam Rida alayhi salam. Qala Allah. So this is hadith Qudsi. Allah talked to Adam Allah Nabiina wa alihi wa alihi salam and his children because it says Yabna Adam, O son of Adam. Certainly this includes also Adam himself because means human beings although the address maybe have has come later but it's for all human beings men women everyone bimashi ati kunta anta alladhi tasha'u nafsika ma tasha if we read it as one sentence or we can read it in this way bimashi ati kunta anta الذي تشاء لنفسك ما تشاء With my will Mashiach means will With my will With my decision for example We can say which decision Will You are There Or you are What 
you want for yourself so whatever you want for yourself so you have Mashia but it is under my Mashia it's because I wanted you to be someone who can have Mashia to decide what you want to be you want to be a good person bad person educated not educated I don't know any quality you have Mashia but it's because of my decision that I decided you have Mashia some creatures are not given this uh, power of choosing and freedom of will and with my power you carried out your obligations you said your salat I don't know salli rahim and fall etc whatever was necessary you did it so you have role but the quwwati with my power the power that I gave you also if you did something wrong so for fara'id it was with my power and it was bin'amati it was with my blessings and my bounties that you were able to commit sins to disobey me who made you pow uh, pow uh, powerful and capable of making decisions me so you have used my power to make good actions or bad actions if Allah had not given us existence and health and understanding and you know will we were not able to do these things I have made you able to hear to see and powerful this is in the Quran also means Allah made you Sami Allah made you Basir who gave you power Allah subhanahu wa ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min Allah whatever good comes to you is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything good comes from him. he's the only provider of good any provider of light of goodness everything positive is from him we explain this in, when in several places for example like when we were commenting on dua in months of Rajab ya man arjuhu likul khair everything good comes from him wama asabaka min sayyatin fa min nafsik and as the Quran also mentions if anything bad comes to you it's from yourself of course anything bad in the sense of sinning bad akhlaq bad behavior not in the sense of for example earthquake or you know flood etc because if you are talking about individuals so there are many problems that happen in the world and I also suffer as a result that maybe I had no role either it's totally out of human control or it's because of misbehavior of other human beings so when we are talking about one person and we say ma asabaka min sayyatin fa min nafsik this sayya'a doesn't mean things which are out of my control it means sins that I have committed Billah, bad traits of character that I have if I have good actions if I have good wishes from Allah they're from Allah I have some role because I could also you know decide to be different but I should be more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give more credit to him than to myself but if there are bad things in me as actions or traits of character the blame goes to me because I could use the same blessings of Allah 
for making good actions and having virtues. Your hasanat, this also confirms, you know, um, the way we interpret it. Your good actions are more attributed to me and I am more responsible for them. I, I have more responsibility to, for them and I am more responsible for them. But, وَأَنْتَ أَوْلَى بِسَيِّئَاتِكَ مِنِّي But when it comes to sahiyat, you are more responsible. Yes, Allah is responsible. <laughs> Maybe someone says, you know, Allah is responsible. In what sense? In the sense that if someone says, you know, why you created this person? Why you gave him, you know, free will? In this sense, yes. But that is his wise and merciful plan. Uh, and that is uh, for the better good of all that we human beings are there and we have free will, etc. It's like, for example, you know, if we make cars and people can travel to work, to, I don't know, visit friends, family, go to doctor, buy things, and one driver is careless and, you know, hit someone we don't blame the factory why you produce cars we don't blame city uh, you know mayor uh, you know and uh, city council and town uh, center why you have created these roads uh, so that one person may drive carelessly <laughs> we blame that driver who drove carelessly Yes, in a sense, uh, someone says, you know, if they had not made the road, if they had not produced cars, uh, we had no problem. But this is not wise. So, anta awla minni. So your bad actions are more related to you. Vadaka. أَنَّنِي لَا أُسْأَلُ عَمَّا أَفْعَلْ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ Again, this refers to what we have in the Quran. لَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلْ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ Here it says, لَا أُسْأَلُ عَمَّا أَفْعَلْ I am not questioned about what I do. Why? Because Allah's actions and Allah's decisions and Allah's choices, Allah's will are perfect, always good. We ask someone who may do good or may do bad. But someone who is always doing perfectly th good things, we don't ask him. Not only we don't ask Allah, even we don't question angels. <laughs> because they only do good things. At least those who are muqarrab, because there is a discussion about you know angels. Some say all the angels. Some say at least those who are very high. Ibadun mukramun la yasun Allah ma amarahum. They are honored and they don't disobey Allah at all. So we don't ask an angel why you did this or that because we know they only do good things. So when we say. Allah is not questioned about what he does. It's not like Na'uzu Billah, a dictator that does lots of mischief and no one can question him. Otherwise they get into problems. No, we don't ask him questions because he don't, he doesn't need to choose between good and bad and then sometimes makes mistakes, etc. Only good comes from him. Everything positive comes from him. Otherwise, if you ask him <laughs> for understanding, there's no problem. He's not a dictator, although he does everything perfectly, but he's happy if you ask him questions. And he would explain. 
even angels ask him questions prophets have asked him questions there's no problem so after translation of this hadith Imam Khomeini says in this hadith there are very important ideas and points در این حدیث شریف مطالب عالیه و مسائل مهمه است از علوم عالیه ما قبل طبیعه There are many important metaphysical issues addressed in this hadith and he says if we want to deal with them with all the prerequisites it would be too long so we just briefly mention some aspects and say results of the things which are discussed in uh, intellectual sciences. First chapter. Those of you who have studied Aqa'id and philosophy, or at least studied Aqa'id with us in Islamic belief system or theological instructions, etc., this chapter, inshallah, is not difficult for you. He says, فصل در بیان آن که برای اسماء حق دو مقام است. This chapter explains the fact that divine names have two dimensions. There are two aspects, two ways of considering them, if you like, you can say it this way. It is about his Mashiach, but also he says Sa'ir Asma wa Sifat. Other also names and attributes of God, like knowledge, like life, like power, etc. All of these qualities can be considered in two ways. One in divine essence. As a quality of essence, as sefat zat or esm zat, esm and sefa here are very close to each other. For example, elm is sefa, alim is esm. So here uh, you don't need to worry about esm and sefat. So sometimes we talk about knowledge as a quality of essence, power as a quality of essence. Sometimes we talk about these as qualities of action. Qualities of essence are always there. They are eternal. Whether there was anything or not, whether any creature you know, was created or not before or after, doesn't make difference. Sefat is out, qualities of essence are inside <laughs> I, I am sorry that I say inside because I don't have proper you know language to use inside not inside like a physical thing they are in his essence but as you know because his essence is absolutely simple basitun alal itlaq basitun min jami al jihad therefore we said qualities of essence are the same as each other in existence and the same as essence they are all identical with each other and with the essence existentially he is absolute knowledge and the same essence is absolute power the same essence is absolute life etc and tohid sepati also is an articulation of this fact but we also can consider these things in his actions, in the way they are expressed and manifested in actions. For example, when Allah says, Hova ma'akum, he is with you. 
This ma'iyat is called ma'iyat qayyumiyya. Because although he is with us, but he is with us as a sustainer. He is qayyum. Qayyum means qa'imun bi muqimun So he stands by himself, but he makes us able to stand. This is qayyum, means we rely on him. He has ma'iyyat qayyumiyya, means he is with us in the sense that an uh, you know, originating cause, illa tafa'ili, is with maf'ul, with ma'lul, with the effect, keeps it in existence. So, huwa ma'akum refers to essence or to action, to action. Or ma min najba thalathatan illa huwa rabi'uhum. There is no group of three people who whisper unless Allah is the fourth. The fourth of three. And if there are five people who are whispering, he is the sixth. Huwa sadisum. Six of the five. In some lectures we have explained that uh, if you say Allah is the third of three, Thalithu Thalatha is a problem. Third of three means you are making him at the level of the other two. I say there are three, he is one of them, third of three. But if you say there are, if there are any three people, Allah is with them, but not one of them. So it's the fourth of three. Because he is with them as well. He's inside them, outside them. So you cannot say he is next to them. It's a very beautiful Quranic point. So being with these three is not in essence of God. It's outside in the realm of action and creation. Vajuhullah refers also to this. This is not about essence of God. This is about action maqam nuriyat allah nur as samawat wal ard this is about essence or action it's about action mashiyat mutlaqe ma tashaun illa an yasha allah this is again about action because it's about you you have to be there and then we say okay you don't want anything unless he wants not that you are not responsible, but it means that you cannot bypass him. Allah created everything with Mashiach, but he created Mashiach with own, it's his own, uh, sorry, its own, means Mashiach by itself. He doesn't need Mashiach for Mashiach, because otherwise it becomes endless regression. Then for that Mashiach, you want Mashiach, Mashiach, no. Mashiach is something that Allah creates directly. So, Imam Khomeini says all these expressions, all these concepts, notions, ma'iyyat qayyumiyya, wajhullah, nuriyat, mashiyat mutlaqe, refer to this second dimension. In the Quran, in this ayah, Allah refers to both aspects and dimensions. He is the first and the last. Surah Hadid, verse 3. First and the last. Zahir and Batin. He is the apparent and the hidden, or the outward and the inward. So, this refers to both dimensions. Being alone in his essence in the sense that there is nothing at that level with him and then being manifested in his actions these are two different aspects so having said this now we can easily understand that not only our Mashiach is a manifestation of his Mashiach, anything that we do, anything we have, any quality, knowledge, power, etc., even our existence, everything is a manifestation 
of his perfection but we manifest him in a limited way so you have absolute existence but for example i am 20 degree 30 degree i'm not absolute this 20 degree for example of existence that i have is from him but not 20 in the sense of limit what i have is from him but what i don't have which makes me very you know poor this limit is not from him this is my lack of capacity anything good comes from him not anything you know negative anything you know which is a limit the limits are because of our containers being limited this world and our relations uh, make it limited if we didn't want to have any limits then we were not human beings we we're not in the physical natural material world so he says this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O son of Adam or child children of Adam with my Mashiach you are what you are and you make your you know, Mashiach so everything is coming from Allah and is a manifestation of Allah and this is why Allah said in the Quran وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى when you threw the arrow you shoot it or threw it yes Ramayta. but you didn't do it on your own we don't say he didn't sh uh, shoot or throw th uh, throw the arrow we say he did it but not independent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he refers to a very technical issue in philosophy you know one of the important issues in philosophy is how to explain knowledge of Allah about details Ilm tafsili how we explain his knowledge about details all the details that are there in this world and every day lots of details change how he knows all these things Shaykh Ishraq Rahmatullah Alay the founder of Hikmat Ishraq Illuminationist philosophy he had the idea that detailed knowledge of Allah is these realities themselves because they are known to him through al mahuduri knowledge by presence this, these are his detailed knowledge Mullah Sadra said no his detailed knowledge in his essence and although his essence is basit but he has kashf tafsili ilm ajmali fi ain al kashf tafsili you can have a simple basit knowledge not scattered information no you can have one basit knowledge which would include all the details for example a mujtahid doesn't need to know millions of questions that people ask him in details he has some knowledge some malaka as we call it that if they ask him any question he knows the answer in a very detailed way without this making his mind divided or scattered in any case there are differences of opinions between Sheikh Ishraq on the one hand and also Khaja Nasiruddin Tusi accepted that and Mullah Sadra on the other hand and Imam Khomeini says I think actually they may not that much differ from each other maybe there is a way to reconcile between their views but he says this is not the place to go to this discussion what he mentions here at the end of this chapter is that whatever happens in this world whether it be a spiritual abstract substances or material physical substances or arras accidents actions whatever happens 
all of them are because of his qayyumiyya all of them are under his power so they cannot be independent from him and this is why he says with my power you perform your wajibat because everything comes from him and then he says وَهَمِنْ مَقَامِ مَشِيَّةِ مُطْلَقِهِ مَقَامِ رَحْمَةِ وَاسِعِهِ وَنِعْمَةِ جَامِعِهِ This sentence is very very important. Very important. What is the nature of this unlimited power and unlimited uh, goodness in action when this unlimited beauty and power and life is acting what comes from him Rahma Rahmate Vasa inclusive Rahma Rahmati Vasaat Kullashi Vasaata Kullashi in Rahmatan Vailma Vane Amate Jaume Comprehensive Nama and therefore, this is why he said, With my ni'mah, with my rahmah, I gave you power, health, everything, understanding. But unfortunately, you use this in sinning. So it's a very beautiful point that everything that comes from him is rahmah. And Nama, and this is what we have also discussed in the discussions about mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, I think we <coughs> stop here. Inshallah, we will talk about other dimensions in this hadith in the next session. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alamin.